Thank you for keeping it MKTV channel. My name is Apeti Ameka Ayubi. I'm the host of Health Matters. We come to you every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. And today we are having a very good discussion, especially for women, young women and mothers on antenatal care and how to achieve positive motherhood. And today I'm having a very amazing guest, one of your own, and she's here. She will introduce herself and tell us all this idea about antenatal care. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Evie. Yeah, my name is Esther Onza. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be hosted by you today. Mm -hmm. I'm an nurse midwife and currently working with K at KMC Kakamega as a nurse lecturer in the Department of Nursing. And uh, I have a lot of passion to with mothers and babies, mm -hmm. and you. I think, yeah, that is why I looked yes, for you. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are we are discussing antenatal care. Yes. What is this antenatal care thing? Actually, when you look at antenatal care, antenatal care comprises of the care of pregnant mothers mm -hmm. from the time they become pregnant to the period before delivery. That's why it's called antenatal. Okay. Ante means before. So it's like the caregiving before, to mothers before, before giving delivery. Before giving birth. Before giving birth. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's care given to mothers during pregnancy. Ah. Yes. So uh, during antenatal care, of course, there is the hospital visits. Yes. And I, I think that is where we want to measure mostly. Yes. Because uh, a lot of women complain out there uh, that they don't like their hospital visit or they don't own it. Uh, per se, I'm lacking a better word to use on mm -hmm. um, antenatal care because mm -hmm. antenatal care is not just about the mother, no. but also the care, the, the the service provider. Yes. So tell us about how the visits are. I mean, at what time or uh, after what period of time is the mother supposed to go for uh, the checks and the visits? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, what you're saying is ideally mothers, mm -hmm. if they're planning to become pregnant, yeah. we have the preconception care before they become pregnant. And it was even better for mothers to come to the clinics before they become pregnant. Really? That period is normally very important yeah. because it prepares the body, it prepares the mother psychologically to prepare for the conception period. Do but mothers come for that? They, rarely do they come, but yeah. it's a very, very important aspect mm -hmm. of motherhood. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to the normal antenatal clinic visits, yeah. the WHO, World Health Organization, had been recommending four visits. The first visit, mm -hmm. a pregnant mother is supposed to come to the visit mm -hmm. before 16 weeks. From the time she realizes she's pregnant mm -hmm. to 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. That is the first antenatal clinic. Yeah. Then the second time she should be coming should be between 16 weeks to 28 weeks. 28 weeks. Yeah. 28 mm -hmm. weeks. Then the third visit should be from 28 weeks to 32 weeks. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth visit from should be from 32 weeks mm -hmm. to 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. Because you realize mm -hmm. during these different visits, the way they are scheduled, yeah. mothers get different care. And most yeah. of for the first antenatal visit, mm -hmm. it's very, very important for the mothers. When mm -hmm. immediately you realize you're pregnant, yeah. most mothers wait until they are, they, 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 they are, they are late. That's mm -hmm. when they come. 90% 90 90 yeah. of mothers come late. Yeah. But it's important for them to come much, much earlier. Once you realize you've missed your period, you've done your pregnancy test, it's positive. Start coming to the clinic. Mm -hmm. And why is that important? One, when you come to the clinic, yeah. the health workers will want to know, the health worker will want to know how is your health? When did you become pregnant? Because they'll help even to know when to expect to have this baby. So that is what you call as they normally calculate the expected date of delivery. Mm -hmm. So during this pregnancy, you know you are supposed to be delivering at such a given time. Not earlier, not later. Not later, but yeah. I get it. Yeah. So yeah. that helps you a lot. Mm -hmm. And they even get more information from you. So that's the part of history taking. Mm -hmm. They want to know about your age. You realize right now you're having a lot of teenage pregnancies. A lot, a lot, a lot. Those are very and specific. Think, talking about that, there's yeah. a girl in Bungoma, I think 13 years, who mm -hmm. delivered triplets. Yes. I mean, it was shocking. 
And that is it. So such a baby, such a girl, needs a lot of care. When they come early to the clinic, they need to be taken good care of. That's a special category of young mothers that need to be given a lot of good care. So when you come, they want to look at the age. Teenagers come with a lot of complications at times. Yeah. That's why you realize when the Bungoma girl she was operated on because yeah. they, 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 the reproductive organs are not yet fully developed. So that is why we need, they need to come to the clinics early to be monitored to be given the right care. Now apart from personal history, you want to look at the socioeconomic history. Yeah. Are you working? If you're not working, how are you getting your how do you get your upkeep? Yeah. Then we want to know are you are, do you take any drugs? Like people, mothers who take alcohol during pregnancy, it affects the growth of the fetus, the baby in the tummy. And do they know that? That the, 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 when they come to the clinic, that's why we tell them that. Otherwise, yes. it's important for the mothers to come to the clinic. During history taking, let them be very sincere and give us the information. Mm -hmm. When any question they ask, those questions are normally pertinent and they give us a way forward on how to take care of them. But I think sometimes these mothers give wrong information because they panic. There's that notion of public hospitals who are on a mother row, nurses of public hospitals who are on a attitude, you know, <laughs> when you live, you see, I think, um, we, why is that? that? That could be true or not true. When you look at nursing, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. we have the nursing ethics that governs on how a nurse should behave. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, you realize they are the patient's rights and yeah. the client's rights. Mm -hmm. So mothers should not fear. They have their rights and they can channel anybody who has disrespected them. Or if they realize there is any abuse during the services, the they can always they channel can... that. How? There are many avenues. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to the hospital, you realize you have the you have we have got the boxes where they can suggestion boxes. Suggestion boxes. They can do that. And apart from that, currently, like in Kakamega County, yeah. we are having we are having the 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 the, 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 mater, the, the maternity ma maternity days. I get yeah. that yeah. The, the, yeah. the maternity mother's mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. When they come, they can open up. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, the community health workers, as they link the mothers to the to the to the facilities, mm -hmm. they can share with them because they are more freer, mm -hmm. and that information they can identify. We have the, 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 the we have got the help. Committees, yes. I get it, but yeah. they have facility yeah. committees. Yeah. These people, these mothers can always channel the information. Of course, there is also always that fear of victimization. Yeah, of course, there's that fear. Yeah, but believe you, means, believe you, believe you, yeah. these nurses have been trained on mm. patients, uh, their rights, right, patients' right, human mm. rights, very, very important, right to confidentiality, right to get dignity. Like what you're talking about is actually the right to dignity. Yeah. Every mother should be treated with a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. And that is why a good antenatal care must be able to give timely services, must be very friendly, I get it, yeah. and it must be beneficial to the mother. And that is why mothers outside should not fear. Let them come to the hospital. Yeah. Believe you me, antenatal services are the best. Oh my God. They need to so, go. <laughs> I hope you had that. I hope you had that. This is health matters. Yes. And I'm sure so many of us didn't know this. So many of us didn't know that before we get pregnant, we're supposed to go check on them at the clinic so that we prepare ourselves psychologically and, you know, walk the, the pregnancy journey well when we are healthy. So um, this is coming to, I think I should give you a break so that you can grab a glass of water and, you know, keep sharing, invite others to come. This is a conversation you can't miss. Health Matters. Uh, today we are discussing antenatal care and I have a guest. His, her name is Esther. She's from Kakamega County Repair Hospital and you know she's an expert here and she's here to tell us more about antenatal care. Actually I cannot explain myself but you'll hear from the process work. So welcome back. 
Yes, thank you very much, Evie. Mm -hmm. Now, before the break, we talked about the information we get from these mothers when they come to us. Mm -hmm. But remember, after taking the information, we analyze it. We want to know, did this mother have any troubles when she became pregnant, the previous pregnancies, the current pregnancies, is she having any, any, any issues? Mm -hmm. Then apart from that, we, we, we always want to do a physical examination. Yeah. We want to assess the woman from head to toe mm -hmm. to be able to identify if there are any issues mm -hmm. that are arising during this current pregnancy or previously. Because yeah. you realize that previously when you're examining them, mm -hmm. you may realize that they could be having signs of anemia, meaning yeah. they have reduced levels of blood. Mm -hmm. At times you may examine them and you realize as you're trying to check on the tummy, they could have been operated on. Operated. And you yeah. want to know, yeah. why were you operated on? Yes. Are you getting that? So yeah. that as you're planning for the this pregnancy on where to deliver and who, when can she deliver, when can she deliver, mothers who have had previous cesarean section scars will definitely need to deliver in an essential comprehensive health facility, mm -hmm. not in a dispensary. Not in a dispensary. No. Not in a dispensary, and not in a health center. Like a dispensary. Yeah. Deliveries can be done in dispensaries, can be done in health centers mm -hmm. where we have no more pregnancy. But mothers who have issues, like mothers who need operation, mm -hmm. they have to be delivered in a hospital that have theater facilities. Mm -hmm. So that is why when they come to the clinic, mm -hmm. we'll be able to identify during examination, mm -hmm. could they be having any issues? During examination, that is when we realize, even when, during the examination of the abdomen, we realize that they could be having multiple pregnancy. Yeah. We realize they could be having big babies. We realize those scars. We realize that they're having abnormalities, like yeah. if there's excess amniotic fluid, which is polyadromias. And we want to know, is this pregnancy corresponding to the gestation period? Uh -huh. So that is why mothers outside, please take come to the clinics yeah. because the antenatal clinics are very important very to you. Important. There is so, so much to be done to ensure that you're having a live baby and a live mother, mm. whom everybody will be proud of. So I think just explain a little bit to them the importance, the importance, the importance of having of, yeah. of antenatal yeah. clinic. Yes. Now when these mothers come to the antenatal clinic, yeah. one of the importance is it is easier to identify any complications that may arise uh -huh. during this pregnancy. Uh -huh. And how do you identify the complications? One, through history taking. Number two, through physical examination. Need to talk. We can easily identify there's a problem. Like when you're doing the abdominal palpation, you may realize that the fetus is not lying across instead of lying correctly in the abdomen. We can realize there's a problem and therefore we can always intervene and take good care. Number two, we are saying that when they come to the clinic, apart from monitoring of the pregnancy, we want them to be able to detect any, any conditions or any abnormalities. Mm -hmm. Conditions that can be identified that can interfere with the pregnancy, we have conditions like anemia. Anemia is where you have reduced blood levels yeah. in the body. In the body yeah. That interferes with the pregnancy. The mother feels the tajik, the pregnancy, even the growth of the fetus in the uterus is interfered with. And that is why when they come to the clinic, they'll even be given supplements, iron supplements, folic acid supplements. Are you getting that? Yeah. The iron supplements and the folic acid supplements, or oh, apart from adding blood to the body, Mm -hmm. They also help in preventing congenital abnormalities. You've heard of babies who are born mm -hmm. and they are having the backbone is not fully completed mm -hmm. or closed. Yeah. That is a result of lack of folic acid during the early stages of development. Yeah. So during the early stages of development, they need to be given folic acid, yeah. which is folate, which is very important. It helps to prevent neural tube defects. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like, uh, like spina bifida, mm -hmm. like in, uh, like in kephalis, mm -hmm. I get in that yeah. where we don't have this, the, the, the vault of the skull. So new, anything to do with the nervous system, the folic acid is very important. That's why the mothers need to come to the clinic early they to be given to. those supplements. Oh, okay. Number yeah. three, mm -hmm. we are saying that when they come early, they'll be given messages. Like for the young mothers, mm -hmm. these are their first timers. They don't know what to expect in pregnancy. They may experience some 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 discomfort. Yeah. We call them minor disorders yeah. of pregnancy. Uh -huh. They'll be scared. They'll be scared. I get yeah. it. And they need to be talked to. We need to talk sure. to 
to them, I'll share with them and tell them like if you feel nauseated, those are because of the hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. And you can be told, you can be eating small feeds mm -hmm. as you go by. So they'll be given the information on what will help them to continue with their yeah. pregnancy. Because there are a lot that arises when it comes to pregnancy, especially for first time months. Yes. I'm <laughs> not yet there. Yes. But, yeah. You know, I get the you know, the things like heart burns. Yes. Miguku fura. But now when the leg, no. when Miguku fura, when uh -huh. it comes in, uh -huh. don't take that to be light. Miguku fura, she's it's not normal. It's not normal. Miguku fura during late pregnancy uh -huh. is normal because of the weight of the growing uterus. Yes. But if you realize Miguku's meanza kufura in early first trimester, second trimester uh -huh. of pregnancy, uh -huh. that is not normal. That could be associated mm -hmm. with preeclampsia, a condition in pregnancy mm -hmm. that causes high blood pressures. So it's not normal for legs. What if you don't have any history of high blood pressure? Pregnancy, that is why it's called pregnancy induced hypertension. Mm -hmm. So normally pregnancy, some pregnancies can result into hypertension. That's why they're called pregnancy induced hypertension. So that's why it's very important for these mothers to come. And we're talking about early detection of complications. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the complications they're able to detect. The pregnancy induced hypertension. Their name is, I get it. I get you. Very, very so talk about the husbands. Now, like the heart burn, mm -hmm. most of the time is just because of the physiological changes that occur during pregnancy. Okay. Now, during pregnancy, mm -hmm. the hormonal there are hormonal changes, so the progesterone level tends to go a bit high. Now, when it goes a bit high, progesterone in the body mm -hmm. makes relaxes the muscles, mm -hmm. and as it relaxes the muscle, remember between the stomach yeah. and the and, 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 and the esophagus, mm -hmm. there is the cardiac sphincter. Yeah. I get it. Yes. Now, it, because of those, the, the relaxation of the muscles, mm -hmm. there will be the regurgitation of easy regurgitation of stomach content mm -hmm. upwards. Mm -hmm. And that the acidity of the stomach con con content is what brings up the heartburn. Mm -hmm. So what normally happens is when mothers have heartburn, they are advised to eat, not to eat things that have a lot of fats. They are advised, advised to eat the food in small quantities, but frequently. frequently. And after some time, you realize it will go away. Most of the time, heart burns are common in early pregnancy and in late pregnancy. In late pregnancy, it's because as the uterus starts growing, growing and becoming big, the stomach is also compressed and it's also yeah. pushed slightly up. up yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. So very easy for regurgitation to occur. So it clears, they don't need to worry about it. Alright, 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 alright. Oh my god. Today is that day. Yes. So we are going for another break. Share, share, share and reshare. My guest today is called Esther. We'll be right back. Health Matters and today we are discussing antenatal care. Mothers, young women who are out there, you're, you are just about to get pregnant, you are thinking of motherhood, you are already in motherhood, you need to hear this. So, welcome back. Thank you very much. Yeah, so you are discussing importance. Yes, and importance of yeah. antenatal care. Yes. Very true. Mm -hmm. You remember I had already mentioned about early detection of complications mm -hmm. and how to manage them. But you say, like, it's still in under detection. When these mothers come to the clinic, investigations are carried out. Yeah. That is what you refer to antenatal, as antenatal profile. It's important for the mothers as they come to the clinic, they need to know what is their blood levels. We take their HPs. We need to know what is their blood group. So that in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. we need to know their blood group early enough and if they need transfusion, we know the type of blood group we are looking for. Apart from blood group, they also do resus factor. Resus factor they are, they are, they are, they are, is important because if a mother is resus positive, if a mother is resus negative, mm -hmm. and the husband is resus negative, and the baby she's carrying is resus positive, mm -hmm. it brings a lot of issues. Because what will happen is, mm -hmm. after delivery, there is what you refer to as a complication may arise and the baby may turn yellow later. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why we need to know the recess factor of the mother, the recess factor of the husband. If the a mother's virus is negative, need to know that they need to be followed up in the clinic. And at about 32 to 34 weeks, there is a drug they are given, anti-D. So that's why it's important for them to come to the clinic to uh, to try to prevent the anti anti antibodies, uh, the, the antigen from crossing the placental barrier to the bay, to the fetus. I get it, yes. or even after yeah. delivery, mm -hmm. it helps to ensure that the mother's immune system is contented, not to affect the the growing fetus or after delivery. Then of course, so the rest of negative mothers very very important to be followed up very closely. The other blood test we take is HIV. HIV, HIV testing very very important to all pregnant women and the good thing is currently HIV is not a big issue because yeah. right now you have drugs sure. and pregnant mothers even if you're HIV positive you can deliver a baby with HIV negative, negative. Yeah. Like getting it with the cross monitoring yeah. and management very very important then apart from that urinalysis when these mothers come to the clinic, you are asked for urine. urine. You realize urine is very urine testing is very important. Oh, it can help job. us. It can help us identify if you have urinary tract infection. Yeah. It helps us to rule out that. It helps us to know whether there are there there, 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 there there's some molecules in the urine like sugar like uh, glucose, okay, glucose or sugar, like proteins in urine. It's not normal to have proteins in urine. It's not normal to have sugar in urine. Mm -hmm. No. Is it, it only during pregnancy or no, even me? What you say is even you. Because when you look at the urine formation and the process of selective reabsorption, all those should be reabsorbed back to the body. If you do urinalysis and you find that there is protein in urine, if there is in urine, if there is protein, there could be a problem with your kidneys. If there is sugar, you could be thinking of you being diabetic, which is not normal. I get it. And that's how at times we discover mothers who could be diabetic because there's yeah. gestational diabetic mm -hmm. during pregnancy. Pre the, the, the type of diabetes that just comes during pregnancy. During pregnancy. And if and after, after, pregnancy. after pregnancy, you realize the, 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 the mother, it may stop. Yes. But the mother keeps on giving birth to very big babies. Oh. That is gestational diabetes. Mm -hmm. So those things can easily be identified and mothers be taken good care of. Sure comfortably. Now apart from investigations, there are health messages. Yeah. Health messages that mothers need to be shared with. As first timers, what do you need to eat? How do you need to dress? Yeah. The personal hygiene. I get yeah, it. Yeah, very important. Very important. Very important. That. Because I think yesterday I was walking somewhere around uh, Biga County and I met this girl. She was pregnant and she was in a very short and tight dress. You know, so I, you know, so I didn't know what to do. I, I wish I could have approached her. Yeah. But again, I think those are some of the little things mothers they're, need to be they're, told. They'll be told and yeah. they are normally taught. Mm -hmm. They're normally taught when they come. And then of course, the best thing is to be able to prevent some of the complications that may arise. We are giving them less cost, costly and things that have been researched on interventions. So there are these interventions that are the mothers have to be put on, like being given the nets. The nets are very important during pregnancy. You realize you go to a health facility, every pregnant woman, when they come for the first time, they're given the mosquito nets, the long-lasting yeah. insecticide-treated yeah. mosquito nets. Reason being, we don't want them to have malaria. A pregnant mother who has malaria, actually they are at higher risk of losing the pregnancy. They are at higher risk of developing anemia. Because the problem with malaria during pregnancy is the parasites, the causative organism of malaria hides under the placenta. And they are going to continue eating on the blood it's where there's a lot of blood supply. I get it. Yeah. It will cause a lot of trouble to the mother. So we don't want mothers who are pregnant to be to, to have malaria. Yeah. Apart from the mosquito side, the mosquito nets is saying that they are, can be they'll be given folic acid, they, they'll be given ferrazant folic acid to boost their hemoglobin level to ensure that they are having the, the levels of blood are normal. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime a pregnant woman has blood less than 11 grams per deciliter, we'll be worried. We'll say they are anemic. Yeah. So we want always the, the blood to be high, high so that the fetus gets enough nutrients wow. and they grow up yeah. well. Then we're saying that these mothers, they can also be given the, the, the deworming. Deworming are services that are also very important. Mm -hmm. Because mothers who have worms, 
you realize worms are, are parasitic, so they yeah. feed on the mother's blood, and the mothers will end up being anemic. So that's why you want mothers to be dewormed, and deworming is just done once. Now when it comes to still prevent, under prevention of malaria, they are given SP, or what you call in normal, in, in the local language, fancida. Now that fancida, yeah. you know, it's, we know what normally they want them to do, actually that is sulfadoxin pyramethamine. Now, uh, the, what happens is we want them to swallow the drugs at, in the clinic. In the clinic, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. when they are being observed. Because if you're not feeling sick, if you're given drugs, even in normal cases, no, you'll you not be able to swallow. It, I I'm getting it. <laughs> but now, that has proved that mothers are put on, uh, on, 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 on preventive measures like using the SPs, they rarely get malaria in pregnancy. Or even if the malaria is there, it's normally not so strong. And the SP helps in preventing the placental, placental parasites. Yes. I get it. Yes. So the mothers, previously they have been given the SPs from 16 weeks of pregnancy, mm -hmm. but currently we are saying that the WHO has reviewed that, and even in Kenya, mm -hmm. the current mm -hmm. uh, antenatal visit, you are saying that they need to be given the SPs from 13 weeks of pregnancy. From 13 weeks. From 13 weeks. So after every four weeks, mm -hmm. they need to be given the SPs, yes. the SPs, yeah. the SPs. And, and so when they go to the clinic, even if they are hungry, mm -hmm. please mothers do not fear swallowing the SPs, it's mm -hmm. for your best. Benefit is for the benefit of the babies. Let us always allow to swallow that. And then the water is normally very safe, so that should not worry them. Yeah. Then the tetanus. Tetanus injection, very, very important. But what, what all the mothers outside do to know is the tetanus injections when you're pregnant, you'll be given one dose after by, by, by 16 weeks. Then the second dose, if you're the first time, a first pregnancy, you'll get you'll get two doses of tetanus toxoid. So the first time you come to the clinic, maybe at 16 weeks, you'll get the first dose. At 20 weeks, which is two, four weeks, you'll be given a return date so that you get another dose. Tetanus toxoid helps to prevent neonatal tetanus. I'm getting it, yes. neonatal tetanus. So it, it's good for the mother, it's also good, good for, for the, the unborn baby. baby. Yeah. That's why mothers, when they come to the clinic, they need to be given that, very, very important. Currently, actually, there's even a more modified vaccine. Previously, it has been tetanus toxoid, but right now we are talking about tetanus and diphtheria. So it's a TD, instead of a TT. I'm getting it. Yes. So they have realized that babies are also being born and they are developing diphtheria. So that is why diphtheria, which is then they wanted to have the two, the, the to prevent the two diseases, tetanus and diphtheria. Um, right, right. So I think um, let me bring you back to this. You've been in this profession for quite some time. Yes, some period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think antenatal care is very important. It is. How does it affect the unborn child? Now, the antenatal care, yeah. how it affects all, how yeah, it can, yeah, and, yeah, uh, it can affect mm -hmm. the unborn baby. Mm -hmm. Just the way I've said, mm -hmm. like when these mothers come early, mm -hmm. we are able to identify if yes. they have any issues. Yeah. Like I've said, if they come and they're doing physical examination, we're taking their vital signs and we realize that they're having high blood pressure. You know, the high blood pressure during pregnancy is not normal. It affects the placental circulation. The feeds that go to the growing fetus will definitely be interfering. And that is what you're referring to as pregnancy-induced hypertension. So the antenatal cave mothers come to the clinic, it will, they, 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 that can be identified and be sorted out early. They can be put on medication to ensure that the, the pressures reduce as the pregnancy advances. Number two, we are saying that to the and born baby, you remember I said during the first trimester, yeah. we are looking at the folate. Folate is very important because during the early stages of growth and development in the uterus, I've talked about the neural tube defects. If the mother comes to the clinic early and she's given folate, the, which, which has folic acid, it's very important for the growth and development that we don't have babies born with congenital abnormalities. Sure. Are you getting it? Yes. Some of the congenital abnormalities, mm -hmm. they're getting them because of the, those minute my, my, micronutrients like the folic acid, yeah. maybe it's missing in the diet, or they don't have enough of it. So if they come to the clinic and they're given that, that will help to prevent that. Now, if a mother is anemic, mm -hmm. remember, because the blood, the, the, the blood levels are low, yeah. even the nutrients getting to the fetus mm -hmm. are also reduced. Yeah. So they end up 
delivering very small babies, they end up with premature deliveries, delivering babies before time. I get it. Yeah. So it affects, and that is why mothers outside, please let us impress mm -hmm. the antenatal care. Of course, when you look at the statistics, you realize during the first clinic, they start clinic late. Yeah. And when they start clinic late, the trouble is, like what I'm talking about, the neural tube defect, mm -hmm. it, it, it will have already developed. Yeah. If they start late. It, it, I get it. Late, because yeah. by, 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 by 12 weeks, mm -hmm. We are saying that most of the things have already been settled. Ah, so then, yeah. then it becomes a challenge to prevent mm -hmm. that. You start late, you end up with all those issues. So let them learn to start coming to the clinic much earlier. Yes. That can help you have a healthy pregnancy. And a healthy pregnancy will definitely help the mother to be alive and well, will give rise to a healthy baby. And that is very, very important. Lastly, before I forget, yes. mothers when you're pregnant, remember why it's important to come to the clinic. We look at birth preparedness and birth, the, the birth plan. We want to know, are you aware on when you are supposed to be delivering? Anytime you go to the clinic, the first time, they have to calculate and tell you mm -hmm. when can you deliver, when are you to do. Okay. So that date you're given, you may deliver two weeks earlier or two weeks later. later. Okay. You don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. You need to be you need to discuss with the healthcare provider where do you want to deliver this baby. You may want to deliver in a health center, but because of the complications that may arise, you'll still be advised that you cannot deliver in a health center or a basic facility, go and deliver in a comprehensive facility where you have data facilities. I get it. Mm -hmm. They may want to know mothers as they prepare for that. What transport? In case you start laboring, yeah. what is your transport? Though all those things are normally discussed. Mm -hmm. If you want to deliver, mm -hmm. who is your birth companion? Yeah. It's allowed even if it's your husband. Mm -hmm. They can take care of you during labor, and oh. those things are discussed. So there's a lot of improvement in the health facility, the, the public health sector. I love it, I love it. I all my babies have had in the <laughs> I public love sector. The you. Yes, I do. And I love it because of the quality of care and they are qualified. Sure. The few people, please, if there are those few cases that could abuse you, please bring them up. Bring them, them up. Use the suggestion, suggestion boxes. Use the, suggestion boxes, yeah. use the CHVs. Yeah. Use the community health workers. Use. You can even go to the administration mm -hmm. or ask for the in charge and identify who is this mistreating you because they normally have the name tags. True. Currently, you are having name tags. Yeah. So identify the person. Mm -hmm. You can report them to the immediate in charge. Mm -hmm. That that can be sorted out. So please, mm -hmm. mothers, I want you to come to the health facilities. Mm -hmm. It's nice to get the proper care. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. It's been a pleasure hosting you on Health Matters today. And I know I'll post you again and again and again. Yes. You have been watching Health Matters on MKTV channel. In case you have not liked our Facebook page, click on the like button. You won't miss this again. Till next time. Bye bye. <laughs>